Today I'm doing a quick video on how to set up USB controllers with RetroArch, uh, updated for RetroPy 3.3 since a lot has changed since the last videos I made. Um, this is strictly for USB controllers. I'll do another one on Bluetooth controllers like the Xbox 360 um, in the future sometime. Um, so first, when you're plugging in your controller, it's important to know the order of operations for your USB. So this is a Raspberry Pi 2, and you see Ethernet port on the left, and then these are the four USB ports. And it goes in order from 0, 1, 2, 3, so player 1, 2, 3, and 4. And so based off of where you plug in your USB controller, that will be which player is first um, versus which player is second, etc. Um, and you can change this uh, programmatically as well, So, or you can easily just swap out the USB uh, ports, and I'll show you that later. Um, and then on the right here, these are the... Um, diagrams for how to configure the most common controllers and you'll notice that they all follow the Super Nintendo controller layout even though they don't match uh, the actual buttons so like with the Xbox the Y's and X and and there's a reason for that because most of the uh, emulators actually have uh, cores that follow the SNES pad um, or the retro pad which is how RetroArch has set up their configurations but again those can also be changed uh, which I'll go over so uh, we will go directly to Emulation Station on first boot and I'll show you how to set up your controllers. All right, here we are and Emulation Station is booted up and we're greeted with the uh, joypad configuration screen. So hold down any button on your device, whether it be a joypad or your keyboard. I've got a Super Nintendo controller plugged in, I've got a Logitech F310 plugged in, and I've got a USB keyboard plugged in. Uh, but the keyboard doesn't show up because it's not a gamepad, but if I hold down a button, it shows up, so you can see. Um, I'll start with my USB gamepad, I'll hold my button down, and then just D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left, bottom, right, bottom, so those are the top two shoulders, and then I don't have anything else, so I'm just going to hold down a button to skip. Um, each individual one, so holding down, hold down, all the way to the end, skip through all the stuff that's not on my Super Nintendo controller. And then the next thing I'll configure is my Logitech F310, and that has a specific way of configuring it, because there's a weird bug with the uh, shoulders uh, on it. So uh, to configure another controller, you press start on the controller you just configured, and go to configure input, and then hold down a button on your other controller, so it shows it's a Logitech F310. So D-pad up, down, left, right, start, select A, which is really B, and B, which is really A, uh, and then X, Y, which are also swapped. And I, I know it's confusing, but just look at the diagrams, um, and it's like the PS3 controller, and it, you should be fine. Just follow those, left bottom, right bottom. And then you're going to skip these two, because um, if you don't, it will just uh, automatically skip when you select the left top because it's an axis. Um, there's a weird bug with Linux. And so uh, we'll go back to it later and uh, it'll work. So left thumb, right thumb, up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. And then so then you'll go back up with your D-pad and then press your left, uh, press what you configured as A, which is really B. And then uh, left top, right top, and go back down. OK, and then I'm going to also configure my um, keyboard just so in case something happens with my game pads, um, I've got this configuration to work with. So I'll just quickly go through that. All right, so and this is very different from how it used to be where everything now is actually configured uh, for RetroArch and a cute few other emulators as well uh, through this emulation station front end. So this should configure your RetroArch controls, but unfortunately with the most recent build of RetroPy 3.3, uh, the default SDL2 driver or the default uh, gamepad driver had a bug and wasn't as uh, decent as we hoped it would be. So if you go into an emulator and find out that it doesn't work because it says it's either not configured or so right there you see my logitech f310 not configured there's problems with it um that's really annoying and it doesn't work pressing buttons on it doesn't do anything um thankfully my gamepad does work so i'll press select and start to exit or you can press select and start on your keyboard to exit or you can ssh in and reboot um 
Anyway, so there's a problem with that one. So I think you probably want to know how to fix that. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. We'll go back. I'm just going to use my Super Nintendo controller. Um, go back to the RetroPie menu. And you can also do this in the back end, but this is the easiest way to do it, at least for me. Uh, you can change the RetroPie, RetroArch configurations from the RetroPie menu. And there's a quick option that you can swap and it should fix your problem. So uh, change common RetroArch options. So select whatever your button is, uh, JSO0. In my case, it's X. It might be A or B for you, depending on your controller. And then we'll go into the all RetroArch config. And then we want to go down to the input joypad driver and select UDEV instead of SDL2. And then that should hopefully fix the issue. Of course, we're going to need to reconfigure our controller that wasn't working first, um, just so it works. And then also, just as an aside, um, the input, this next step uh, setting, the input player one analog D-pad mode, um, it will let you use an analog as a D-pad if you change this number to a one. And you can see the help information on the bottom, uh, just in case you don't remember. Um, so just fun little fact, if you ever feel like doing that, if you uh, have a, a newer controller that you maybe want to use uh, the analog or the D-pad. Anyways, so cancel back out, and that should have saved our settings by just canceling out. And then if we press start again with, our, um, with my Super Nintendo controller, configure input, and we're going to reconfigure our Logitech F310. And then up, down, left, right, start, select, A, B, X, Y, left, bottom, right, bottom, skip, skip, left, bottom, right, bottom, up, down, left, right, up, down, left, right. Then we go back up, left top, right top, OK. Then we select OK. Right, so we go to Super Nintendo. Mario World and look at the green and the yellow text at the bottom configured and configured yay no longer problems so uh, that should fix it hopefully and so if it doesn't fix it um, there is one other thing that I want to go over um, in the past I'm sure you've seen the tutorials about uh, using RetroArch Joy Config to set up your controllers through RetroArch like I said, it's already done automatically through Emulation Station, but for some reason, if you do need to do it manually, I'll show you how to do that really quickly through the Argui. And uh, again, go to the RetroPie menu, and then you can configure RetroArch and launch RetroArch Argui. Go in here, and again, you'll probably need a keyboard for this if your controller is not working, because if they're not configured for RetroArch, of course, they're not going to be able to access or navigate the menus. Um, and it will also only work with whichever one is player one. So my Super Nintendo controller is uh, player one. So that's the one that's going to control it. Um, so we're going to first go into settings. And then we're going to go into input. And then we're going to go into input user one binds. And so this selection here, this is the new RetroArch Joypad config, essentially. So if you press uh, A and select bind all, you can do this and then, so you configure it B, Y, select, start, up, down, left, right, um, and then the A and top, left, right. And then again, we'll just let this time out, just like the old RetroArch Joy config. And this will save our um, configurations for, um, well, this will create, um, well, actually, we'll have to save it manually. I'll show you in a second on how to do that. Um, but this will sh configure it for you without needing to do it manually um, in the back end. So that's done. Uh, and then I'm going to select Save Auto Config, and it will save uh, an auto config just like it does automatically with Emulation Station. And then we'll go back. And unfortunately, like this one, it doesn't configure the hotkeys for you. It just configures the, uh, the binds for your controller. So then you're going to want to actually manually configure the input hotkey binds. Again, this is done automatically through Emulation Station, but if you are doing this manually uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but just in case you have to, if, you do, if we screw up the drivers again, I guess, um, you can do input hotkey binds, and then you can just select whichever uh, 
heart keys and uh, things. So if we're doing load state, press A, and top left shoulder, save state, top right shoulder. And then of course, you're gonna want to make sure that you have the enable hotkeys button, otherwise none of them are gonna be enabled. So this is what we make select. Let's choose select. Um, okay, so we'll go back and then another setting, you wanna make sure that you save your configurations on exit. So make that, make sure it's turned on by pressing the left to right arrow on the D-pad. And then press B to go back, and back, and then we'll just quit RetroArch and that should save our configurations files. Um, and then I'm just going to show you quickly in the back end where those things were saved just so you understand how the hierarchy works for uh, manual configurations with RetroArch. Again, it should all just be done automatically and that's how it should be working. But if you would like more customization, um, I'll show you how to do some of that. So we will go back to the back end right now. All right, here we are on the back end and there are two ways of accessing it. I'll show you both. So on the right, you've got SSH in through PuTTY. Um, which is the same as the terminal if you press F4 while you're, on em while you're in emulation station. And then you can also just type uh, backslash backslash RetroPie into any Windows uh, file explorer and it will give you access to the configs. Um, so these configs here are the same as uh, opt RetroPie configs. So you can see all this stuff there. And then in the old folder, the RetroArch joypads, this is the auto configs uh, that are generated through uh, through emulation station uh, by default. So let me just explain it really quickly. So there's auto configurations, which are how we have it set up by default with RetroArch and RetroPie. And what those do, that's when the yellow text shows up at the bottom and uh, that enables you to it's a hot swap or uh, hot plugging. Anyways, it allows you to, to plug in different USB uh, controllers and you can plug them in and out. And it's not a big deal because it will automatically recognize uh, any configured controllers. Um, so they're not hard coded to that controller or USB port. So it makes it a lot more versatile. Um, and then there's hard coding the configs, which I'll show you after this, um, which uh, restricts it to that port for that uh, that controller. Anyways, so these are the configurations that were generated uh, through RetroArch. So this is the one that we created through RetroArch, just barely, and this is one that was automatically generated through Emulation Station. Uh, these are my USB gamepad. So uh, this is one that's just automatically generated. I'll show you uh, the contents of it. Uh, so you see, you've got most of the. It's a UDev driver, USB gamepad, um, just has regular. Uh, input controls, but it also has the uh, the hotkeys, so the enable hotkey button, uh, load state, save states, exit. Um, so that's all there, and that's all automatically configured. Um, that's how it looks. And again, there's one for Logitech F310, and then. Um, but when we configured it manually, you'll see that this one only has the. Uh, controls for the gamepad itself. It doesn't have the hotkeys because those are hard coded in the RetroArch config. Um, so I definitely prefer the auto the auto configs that were generated uh, automatically. Um, but if you did want to do hard coding or manual changes, uh, either by a per core. So if you only wanted to make some changes specific to the Super Nintendo emulator, or um, overall altogether, then if you go back to the configs folder and go into all, there's the RetroArch config, which is what will change everything overall for all of your emulators. So when you change player one, it will change it for everything. And there's a bunch of other settings as well. Um, so that first one was for the computer or for the keyboard. And then these are the input stuff for the um, for the gamepad. So one thing that if you are hard coding stuff and you do want to change uh, the configurations, uh, instead of unplugging the USB, um, if you just want to change the player numbers, um, you can essentially change USB 0 to USB 1 uh, and then USB uh, 1 to USB 0 
where that basically will just swap um, the input. And that's again, um, let's see, why is that picture? So that's basically swapping these two ports here. So if you want to um, switch, which I mean, I personally just use hot plugging and just swap out the USB themselves. But if you do have some reason to switch emulators, but you don't want to be constantly unplugging them when you switch emulators, then you can do that. Um, that's just a fun little fact if you don't want to do that. Um, and then, so that's the overall configurations. And then if you want to make a specific configuration for an emulator, let's say maybe you wanted to just swap to A and B on the Super Nintendo, um, you go down to the SNES folder and there's a RetroArch config there. And this is specific to just the uh, the Super Nintendo. And so I think, actually, that's a bad example because I've messed with it. Um, maybe we'll just go to the Mega Drive. Yeah, so you can see here that... Um, Yeah, so they, if you want changes only specific to the core for the Mega Drive, then you'll want to make sure you make your changes above this line here. Otherwise, it will just take the overall configuration and will ignore everything after it. So uh, when you make changes, make sure you've changed them, I think, above here. Um, so yeah, make sure you do that, and then you can just put in whatever you want. So maybe we wanted to... Um, change it to a start button instead of select for the hotkey, then we could probably do that through there. Um, but you can make whatever changes and you can pull those from the RetroArch config and just copy them over and then just swap the numbers. Um, and then there's also a way where you can um, do it by ROM, where essentially you will go into your ROM folder and create a new folder um, and you can do this through the run command menu when it boots up you can choose to uh, create custom retroarch configs for um, per rom and it will create a uh, dot it will basically create a dot config file for any of your rom names and then you can do custom configurations that way uh, and that will override the um, the per core uh, options as well as the uh, per like the overall configuration. So um, yeah, so that's just if you're hard coding. If you just want to change um, individual um, like individual buttons, or you just want to make hard coded changes, uh, there's also an option for remapping called core input remapping where instead of changing or hard coding your changes to your controller, it actually changes how the core receives them. So it makes the core change like your, if you wanted to swap A and B, um, you could tell the core to swap A and B where it wouldn't actually change uh, what's configured as A and B on your controller. If that makes sense. Flube has made a good video on it, so I'm not going to really uh, cover it because he's done a really good job on covering it, so you should just see his video for that. Um, he explains it pretty well. Um, and so it basically has the same hierarchy where you can do uh, input remapping for the overall configs uh, for one core, or you can do it for um, just one ROM specifically. Um, and I think that's about it. Um, really, everything should just be automatic nowadays. And if you want to make some custom configurations, then that's great too. Um, but hopefully it's simple, and uh, hopefully we don't run into any more issues uh, that cause the same problems we uh, recently had, because that was no good. So. Um, hopefully this is helpful to you, and uh, yeah, I think that should be everything, so uh, have fun.